Now we have three pizzas to eat. <clears throat> I think we'll be okay. I think so too. Welcome back to the Midnight Fried and to another cooking video on our Traeger pellet grill. Now, one of our favorite things to make on it, and we really don't do it a lot, is wood-fired pizza. Trust me when I say it is delicious. And we even go so far as to make our own pizza dough and red sauce, and we're going to try white sauce too this time around. But we're going to show you how we do all that because you will have to plan a little bit to get all this stuff done, but I promise it is totally worth it. Now, the first thing you'll need is four cups of flour. We are using whole wheat flour this time. You're welcome to use all-purpose flour. That works really well too. And you're going to whisk that with one and a half teaspoons of fine sea salt. So once you have that in your mixing bowl, what you're going to do is heat up a cup and a half of water. Now you want that water to be warm, so somewhere between 100 degrees and 110 degrees. And that's what you're going to put your yeast into. You, you need a quarter ounce package of yeast, and you're going to mix that together. And once you have that all dissolved, you are going to pour that mixture into your flour and salt. And now, you just start combining everything until it starts to form. Okay, so once you have that initial mixing done with the yeast mixture and your flour and salt, that's when you'll start judging what you need to do next. You know, we, we dump the dough out onto a floured surface and I can already see that our dough is a little bit dry. So if it's dry, what you want to start doing is adding a tablespoon of water at a time until it gets to a good texture. If it's too wet, you're going to start adding a tablespoon of flour at a time to dry it up a little bit. So I'm just going to add a tablespoon of water and start mixing that in there to help this dough form a little bit better since it was so dry in the beginning. And I wonder if that doesn't have something to do with it being the whole wheat flour instead of the, you know, the white all-purpose flour. Be interesting to do an experiment with that. But now you are just going to knead the dough for about 10, maybe 12 minutes or so make sure everything is really nice and distributed in there and you should probably already be able to see how much better form that dough looks now since we added that tablespoon of water so once you've worked your dough to the point that it is smooth and elastic you're going to form it into a ball and you're going to take a bowl and drizzle it with just a little bit of olive oil And you're going to take your dough, put it in the bowl, and then you're going to cover it with either a damp towel or like we're going to use just some plastic wrap, not cover tight, just on there really loose. Because you do want some air to get in there. And then you just want to put it in a warm area where there is no draft, no wind, no vents, anything like that. And we're just going to let it rest and rise for about two hours, and then we'll check on it and show you the next step. It has been about two hours on our dough, and it has definitely gotten bigger. <laughs> so we're going to uncover it. And now it's time for the next step. And what you want to do Take it out of the bowl and you're going to deflate it just like that and what we're going to do now is cut it into three equal pieces and 
we're just going to, we're not going to work them a lot. We just want to work them back into that round form. But we still have a little bit left to do. We're going to now take our three separate doughs and put them in three separate bowls. And again, we're going to drizzle some olive oil into those bowls first. And just get those nice and coated. And we're going to loosely cover those again with either your plastic wrap or a damp towel. And now we're going to let them sit for about an hour, again in a warm spot with no drafts, no wind, no air blowing on them. And then after that hour is up, we're going to wrap them in plastic wrap, put them in the fridge, and you're safe to refrigerate these for about 24 hours. I wouldn't go any longer than that. Next, we are going to make our pizza sauce. And it's actually a pretty easy recipe because everything seems to be in pairs. So you have two small onions. We used Vidalia, um, but I'm sure you can use white or yellow. Two garlic cloves, everything finely diced. Two carrots and two stalks of celery. Now I used baby carrots, but I just kind of line them out to see how big a carrot is and that works just fine for me. You have two cans of crushed tomatoes, anywhere between 28 and 32 ounces a piece. You're going to have half a teaspoon each of sea salt and black pepper and two bay leaves. First, you're going to saute your onion and garlic in about a half a cup of oil, olive oil. Then you're going to add your celery and carrots, then your salt and pepper, and finally your crushed tomatoes and bay leaves. And you are gonna let that simmer over a low heat for about an hour. At that point, you're going to take an immersion blender and blend it all together so it's nice and smooth. If you don't have an immersion blender, you can use a food processor, but honestly, if you do this even once a year, I would highly recommend an immersion blender. They're cheap and they're so easy. You can just blend it up in the pot that you're using and not have to worry about cleaning all those parts of the food processor. Then you will cool it before refrigerating it, or if you're using it right away, you can use it right away. I am really excited because I think we might have a little bit extra to use on some pasta later this weekend. So I am definitely looking forward to that. Delicious. I can't wait to eat it. And we are also going to try for the first time a white pizza sauce. Now we have had this at some pizza places. I love it, it's one of my favorites. If I'm not gonna get toppings, I definitely prefer a white pizza. This is a very easy recipe for white garlic pizza sauce that we are also going to try on pasta probably later this weekend. We're going to melt two tablespoons of butter, saute four cloves of garlic, then we're going to add our spices, which basically is just three tablespoons of flour, a quarter teaspoon each of salt, pepper, and oregano. Then we're going to slowly add in the milk while whisking. We're using almond milk because honestly, we hardly ever use milk and it goes bad before we can use it. So I think this lasts a little longer. After you get the milk to a kind of the consistency that you want. You're gonna try and get it to, to thicken up a little bit. You're gonna remove it from the heat and you're gonna add about half of a cup of Parmesan. I think we're probably going to wind up adding more cheese if I know anything about, you know, 
our experiences with Alfredo sauces, we have a difficult time kind of getting them to thicken up. So we will keep the cheese out. If we need to add more later, we will. This is probably the most successful attempt at making a cream or milk-based sauce for us. The almond milk really did thicken up very nicely even before we put the cheese in. When we put the cheese in, I mean, it is really a thick, creamy, kind of eat sticky cheese sauce. And that was just a half a cup. I mean, you can see it's sticking to the, to the whisk. Normally we would have had to um, just keep whisking and keep cooking to try and get any kind of thickness. But this is really, I, I want to taste it. It's garlicky, which I love. Um, it's not overpowering, so I think it's gonna work really well on both pasta and the pizza. Um, it's not as sticky tasting as I was expecting. It's really smooth and creamy. So I think it's gonna go on the pizza. We're gonna be able to spread it on the pizza really easily, I think. So now we're getting the grill ready. I have the Traeger started up and then we're going to crank it all the way up to high and let it come up temperature. And while it's doing that, we are going to put a pizza stone on the grill to let that heat up along with it because that pizza stone is a really important part in our process. Well, our foundations are ready. We have the dough ready to shape into the crust. We have our sauces ready, both the red and the white. And now we're going to let you in on the secret to making excellent pizza on your pellet grill. And that secret is that you have to bake your crust for a little bit before you take it out and put it on the grill. Now we do ours in the oven, so it's kind of a, a assembly line. So we put the crust in the oven first to kind of prime it and get it ready. Then we'll put our toppings on and then we'll take it outside and put it on the grill to finish. You don't have to do that, but if you want the very best pizza you can get on your pellet grill, that's really the best way to do it. Otherwise, the grill just does not get hot enough to cook the crust fast enough to keep up with the way the toppings are cooking. This way you give your crust a head start and make the very best pizza for not only you, but also guests you might have over. Now, one of the things that makes pizza so great is that it's so democratic. Uh, you can choose the toppings you want, and that's what Catherine and I are going to do today. We like our pizzas two totally different ways, and on mine, I'm going to do pepperoni, jalapenos, and black olives. Okay, so we have the pizza crust flattened out now, and we're going to put it in a 350 degree oven. So for this whole wheat crust, we left it in the oven at 350 for about seven minutes to get it started. And now we're just gonna start topping. My turn to make my pizza and if you know me at all or you've watched any of our videos concerning food you know there will be a lot of vegetables involved I have selected mushrooms onions and green peppers we had some little grape tomatoes left over so I think I'm gonna throw some of those on um, pretty much with vegetables the more the merrier and then for our white pizza, which we are going to share, we've decided we're going to try it several different ways. So on a couple of slices, we're going to try some mushrooms. On a couple other slices, we're going to slice up some um, Roma tomato, which we have left in the cabinet. And then we're just going to leave the other part plain so that we can get a taste of the original with the sauce and the garlic and all of that deliciousness. Now we're going to go put it on the grill. We have the grill cranked up to high, so it's running somewhere between 400, even up to 450 at some points. We have our pizza stone on the grill. It's been preheating along with the grill. Gonna put it on there, close the lid, let it go for about five minutes, and then I'm gonna check it and see how the cheese looks. If it looks good, we'll go ahead and take it off then. If not, we'll close it back down and let it go for a few until we're happy with the way it looks on top. And we'll just keep that cycle going with these three pizzas. And 
And now we eat. I have to say, I did a really good job making my pizza. It is delicious. That is really good homemade pizza. To be 100% honest with you though, the whole wheat crust is fine. It's definitely healthier for you. I'm not a huge fan. You can really taste it. I mean, you, you definitely it's very, know it's wheat. It is very weedy. Yes, um, <laughs> it is. I, I would prefer the all-purpose white flour. That would be my recommendation if you were having people over, especially um, if you're making this for kids. I think they would like the... <laughs> the white flour better. The only reason we used whole wheat is because we had it and we didn't have white flour. And I just try whenever I can to use everything that we have in our pantry instead of letting it go to waste. So I just thought this was a good opportunity to get rid of some stuff that we've had for a while before we go and buy new stuff. That's really the only reason we used it. Normally we would not do that. How was your crust? Because his Chris baked his crust in the oven for seven minutes. My pizza, I flattened more so it was thinner and I was really worried that it was going to be too um, crispy before we put it on the grill. So I didn't do mine as long, but I think maybe I should have. The crust is definitely not burnt or really crisp. It's still really soft um, and kind of chewy actually. I, I wish I had left it in the oven a little bit longer hmm. okay. um, because I do like my crust a little bit, a little bit crispier. But it's also, the most important thing is that it's not falling everywhere, which is what would happen if you just took this out and put it straight on the grill instead of putting the crust in the oven first. No matter how thick your crust turns out to be, I think probably eight minutes would be a safe bet. And then you can just take it up from there just based on experience. So now let's try the white pizza. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. That sauce is really good. That would be so good on regular crust. But even, like, I don't think I can taste the wheat nearly as much. No, the wheat, the wheat crust is actually pretty good with the white, with the white pizza. Um, the garlic kind of masks the flavor of the it wheat. It blends a lot better than the red sauce does. It, the red sauce is just a huge contrast between the wheat crust. So I definitely it oh definitely gosh. like it better with the white. That's a really I yeah. can't wait to eat that with pasta. It's gonna be amazing. Now we have three pizzas to eat. <clears throat> I think we'll be okay. I think so too. All right, we're gonna go eat. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you try out these recipes on your own grill, please leave a comment down below and let us know how it went. Give us any of your insights. Let us know any tricks you might have to making really excellent pizza on your grill. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that little notification bell so that you know every time we release a new video. And we will see you on the next episode of The Midnight Fried.